It is a feud that has garnered nationwide attention. The battle between Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and Disney takes a new turn. The House of Mouse now taking legal action against the governor. Disney, the parent company of ABC, filing a lawsuit against Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. The Mouse House dealing another blow to Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Disney ditching its plan to build a billion dollar office complex in Lake Nona. Pinning one of the world's most beloved companies. This is about one thing and one thing only, and that's retaliating against us for taking a position about pending legislation. Against one of the nation's most popular governors. You're a corporation based in Burbank, California, and you're going to marshal your economic might to attack the parents of my state. So just what exactly is behind this feud? What's at stake for both Ron DeSantis and Bob Iger? And which side will ultimately come out on top? The feud between Ron DeSantis and Disney really started in 2022 when the company came forward against the so-called Don't Say Gay Bill, which prohibited Florida public schools from teaching sexual orientation to kids in kindergarten through third grade. We will make sure that parents can send their kids to school to get an education, not an indoctrination. Then Disney CEO Bob Chapek largely remained silent at first declining to take a stance. But after mounting public pressure, he released a company-wide memo to employees, writing in part, as we have seen time and again, corporate statements do very little to change outcomes or minds. And that, quote, the best way for our company to bring about lasting change is through the inspiring content we produce. That memo was not well received at Disney. There was immediate pushback and it was all over social media. It was basically seen as though Bob Chapek had not taken a stand for the LGBTA community. After facing intense backlash for his initial statement, Bob Chapek released a second statement days later, saying in part, it is clear that this is not just an issue about a bill in Florida, but instead yet another challenge to basic human rights. You needed me to be a stronger ally in the fight for equal rights, and I let you down. I am sorry. When he did that and sort of waffled a little bit, you know, in, in terms of messaging, DeSantis pounced on it and he called Disney woke. Our policy is going to be based on the best interest of Florida citizens, not on the musing of woke yeah. corporations. Yeah. And in April of 2022, DeSantis took things a step further signing a bill into law that would officially strip Disney of a special self-governing status in the area around its Orlando theme parks, then known as the Reedy Creek Improvement District. Since then, Bob Chapek has been fired as the Disney CEO and Bob Iger has returned. That's where the DeSantis-Iger feud begins. With CEO Bob Iger back at the helm, Disney began to go on the offensive filing a lawsuit in federal court in April against Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and other officials, alleging a targeted campaign of government retaliation. Uh, but a year ago, the, the company took a position on pending Florida legislation. And while the company may have not handled the position that it took very well, a company has a right to freedom of speech just like individuals do. And obviously, in taking the position, the governor got very angry about the position Disney took and it seems like he's decided to retaliate against us, including the naming of a new board to oversee the property and the business. In effect, to seek to punish a company for its exercise of a constitutional right. In response, less than a week after Disney's lawsuit, the newly appointed local governing board voted in May to sue Disney in state court. And in the latest turn of events, Disney just announced it would not be moving forward with plans to build a roughly $1 billion office complex in Lake Nauna. Disney is the largest taxpayer in Florida. It has said it plans on investing $17 billion in the coming years in the greater Walt Disney World theme park area. It pays more than a billion dollars each year 
in taxes to Florida. We have over 75,000 employees, which I noted in my opening. Countless thousands of indirect jobs have been created. About 50 million visitors will go through our gates this year alone, about 8 million of them from outside the U.S. And we are the largest taxpayer in the state. Superficially, that would be a bizarre punching bag. Like That's not the entity that you want to make your enemy because if you are the governor of Florida, you are so reliant on Disney. And also just in general, like you really want to pick a fight with Walt Disney World. But Ron DeSantis did just that giving oversight of the special district to his own appointees, known as the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District. The reason why the legislature had to act was not because of anything we did. Um, it was basically born out of Disney's arrogance that they would be able to subcontract around the duly enacted laws of the state of Florida. Uh, that's wrong. The special tax district where Disney is located is really now governed by a board uh, of all uh, DeSantis appointees. These people were handpicked by the governor himself to really rein in Disney's self-governing uh, abilities. Uh, and so the, the, the board itself is meant to really take on the company through a government entity. And so far, there have been threats of possibly building a prison next to Disney, all after the company came forward against uh, the so-called Don't Say Gay bill. I think the reason this is happening is that Ron DeSantis is not your typical governor. He's planning on running for president in 2024, and he's decided that he's going to make these culture wars a major part of his presidential campaign. Bob Iger, for his part, has tried to set the record straight regarding special districts in Florida. So this is not about special privileges or a level playing field or Disney in any way using its leverage around the state of Florida. There are about 2,000 special districts in Florida, and most were established to foster investment and development, where we were one of them. It basically made it easier for us and, and others, by the way, to do business in Florida. So while it's easy to say that the Reedy Creek Special District that was established for us over 50 years ago benefited us, it's misleading to not also consider how much Disney benefited the state of Florida. And we're also, we're not the only company operating a special district. I mentioned 2000, the Daytona Speedway it has one, so do the Villages, which is a prominent retirement community, and there are countless others. The stakes now are much higher because they're in court in two different jurisdictions. They're in federal court where Disney sued, and they're in state court where the board that was appointed by DeSantis has sued Disney. Disney has a pretty strong case uh, just on the practicalities of it. DeSantis and the Florida legislature are trying to punish Disney uh, for speaking up very mildly about a law in Florida. Disney is actually making several different arguments. No matter what is ordinarily okay, can't take an action to punish private entity because of its speech. As for Governor DeSantis, the state's argument may be on shaky legal ground. The argument that they have is that Disney always got special treatment. Whether or not that's true, to re revoke it as retaliation for you know, expressing a political opinion is a serious problem. And if a court were to embrace a broader rule, which is, sure, go ahead and legislate whenever you uh, don't like what a company is saying, uh, I think that would be a very strong signal, among other things, to businesses, you know, stay out of Florida. But none of this has ever deterred the governor, in part because of his strong support amongst Republicans in the Sunshine State. I'm definitely on DeSantis' side. Go woke, go broke. I think that uh, renewing our annual passes shows that we're supporting them, and I'm not supporting them or their beliefs in what they're trying to do. There are other polls that have suggested that this fight against Disney is part of the Republican Party's fight against you know culture wars and getting involved with things like that is actually a real uh, net positive for Republican primary voters. In this recent March poll conducted by the University of North Florida, DeSantis enjoyed a much higher favorability rating when compared to Disney among the GOP base. About 87% of Republican voters said they found DeSantis to be either very favorable or somewhat favorable. When the same poll of voters was asked about Disney, 
only about 27% said they found the company either very favorable or somewhat favorable. So if and when, and likely when, Ron DeSantis runs for president, this battle with Disney could end up helping him in the primary. But questions remain. How will this translate to the general electorate? Even if he pulls this off and uses this kind of culture war against Disney uh, as a way to become the Republican nominee for president, there's still a lot of questions as how this, is this going to really appeal to independent voters, swing state voters in a general election. This is more of a political issue than it is a Disney financial or business issue. This isn't particularly going to be a stock mover for Disney. It is definitely an annoyance. Iger believes that he has the moral high ground here. And in past comments, he's been very clear about how he believes that Disney was retaliated against for expressing a political opinion on the Florida legislation. Any action that thwarts those efforts simply to retaliate for a position the company took sounds not just anti-business, but it sounds anti-Florida. DeSantis, meanwhile, is showing no signs of backing down. We fought very hard for children. We have a fundamental disagreement in this state in terms of what we think is appropriate for children and what the people in Burbank, California, think is appropriate for children. So you may have to get into a little bit of the legal machinations here and how they're going to resolve this and what the ultimate long game is here for Disney. From a political standpoint, Disney may gain just as many points as DeSantis feels like he's gaining by not making this go away. For now, as both sides wait for the legal process to play itself out, the war of words between the Florida governor and Disney continue. We're not going to let them try to impose the idea of gender fluidity on our kids, particularly our young elementary school kids. And if Disney doesn't like that, well, here I stand. I am not backing down one inch. I am going to do what's right, and we are going to make sure we're standing up for our children. We operate responsibly. We pay our fair share of taxes. We employ thousands of people. So I'm going to finish what is obviously kind of a long answer by asking one question. Does the state want us to invest more, employ more people, and pay more taxes or not?